Okay, if you want to have uh, shelter from the snow flying back from your snow blower, but you don't want a big heavy cab that's a pain to take on and off, and you know, one man maybe can't do it alone or it takes too long, I made this out of conduit here and then put clear vinyl on it. And this three point hitch has a weight bracket on it. And I just leave that on because I have no attachments like a, oh, like a tiller or one of them big bush cutters that need a three point hitch. So I just leave this on. Then if I want to add any weights, I've got eight suitcase weights there. <clears throat> but being this is a X758 four wheel drive, I've never needed to put weights on. I haven't even had to put chains on it yet. I just have a level level driveway and has no problem going through any snow we've ever had here in Minnesota. I've only had this, you know, this is my second year, but um, it's not that hard to make. There's 90, 90 feet of conduit here. They're just, you know, all simple bends and not a big deal. And uh, then this bracket here just plugs into the uh, receiver hitch. And I made it with hinges here so I can get on and off. When I pick it up here, I got this little piece that catches right here. And then I got to pull that string, hang on here a minute, to release it and let it back down so it's not really that big a deal. Then by keeping the uh, weight bracket on there, I've got a, what do you call it here, a aerator. And it had a regular handle on it, pull behind handle, but I made this here. This is a solid piece of two inch steel, which will go into that same receiver hitch. And by welding on these two brackets here, onto this piece, which is also two inch that I bolted on, but it's hollow, of course. With that being on there, I can, also put it into this receiver hitch and when I get to the driveway or sidewalk anything you don't want the aerator to go over that's hard I just pick it up with the hitch and then set it back down so it's basically like a three-point hitch aerator but it's not a three-point one but I'm using it that way and then I've got the striper here that I made it also plugs in right here to that uh, receiver hitch and what I did was I bought three two-foot brooms. Each two-foot broom had a three-inch red painted area on the end. Well, you can just see they're just on the ends and all that's because the middle one I cut three inches off each end and then three inch off the other end of the two outside ones and put them on there. Now I got a 60 inch. Well, that's what the deck is, a 60 inch. And after it brooms by it, then this piece on a rubber flap here with a piece of steel on the end, rolls by it and you get the best stripes. It's kind of like if your wife would vacuum a carpet and she goes one way and then the other way. It's the same look in the grass. It really heavily defines stripes like you wouldn't believe. And uh, also with this weight bracket being on here, I've got uh, a piece over here right there that plugs into the receiver hitch also and then the chain that's on it goes on this part and goes over the back side of the deck which is back in here and then I pick it up. So you got to take the deck off out in the grass because it seems to slip on concrete when you drive off of it. Well then you got a 350 pound deck sitting out in the grass. So then I use this three point hitch to pick it up. I've got a video on that too. And I bring it into the garage and set it down. Then I've got this contraption I made. It's got a couple pulleys on top and a bolt winch. And what I did was kind of use the design of a hand cart. And uh, attached to it here is some three quarter inch steel, round steel. And I just push this whole unit here, I push this whole unit up onto the deck. These are the same hooks that are used on the tractor, which has that same 
three quarter inch solid round bar on the tractor, stationary on the tractor. Then I uh, take this when it's laying down flat on the ground and just roll this underneath it here. It's an axle strap. I had to shorten it a little here with a bolt. Otherwise I didn't have enough play left here, travel play. Then I just uh, take this long board here and I put it down, slide it through a couple of them, then I can stand on it way out here. Then I take the crank here and just crank the deck up, nothing to it. Just the way that my body here is holding the whole thing from moving. Then, <clears throat> once it's all done and up here, you got real easy access to take the blades off or sharpen them right in place like I do with an attachment that fits in a drill. You can clean it. I take the pressure washer and clean it at the end of the season. And you can grease everything real good. And the good thing is, you, you can't push this thing. I, I'm really pushing hard. You can't push it forward and it doesn't want to pull backwards. So it's real solid right in place there. It's not going to move any. And uh, it works out really good. Oh, then I got my latest thing here, a Buford bucket. As some of you may know, they don't make a factory 44 or 45 loader anymore for the 700 series. They discontinued it. They've only got them on like the 1025R and on up. But that doesn't matter because there's aftermarket ones that are made. And I looked at a couple of different aftermarket ones. This one here is the Buford bucket. I just got this. I haven't had it very long at all. And uh, what I did, it's made to put three bolts in here on the front of the frame just like it is. And then it sits here on the front piece of the tractor. I made these plates here. These are 5 8 inch bolts, fine thread. They're tapped into this piece. And then I screwed them in tight. So what I do when I want to put this on is I put these in ahead of time on the tractor. These hold them in place and then when I'm done bolting it up I just pull these out. But when I'm done all I got to do is, oh this is on a rolling uh, motorcycle dolly here too. So I'll take this whole thing and slide it up to the front of the tractor. Take this crank jack here and let it down to it. Slide them green plates in which bring the bolts out and all I got to do is spin on three nuts in the back and one into the front here on each side. And that's easy enough to do because these are all tapped. Here's the inside of the front one coming through a tapped hole and it it cuts the time down to I can I can put this loader on and take it off quicker than if they made the factory one yet, putting it on and taking it back off. I can actually do it quicker. And then of course you just got the Four hoses, just like you would on the factory one to put on. And uh, this will lift more than the factory one. This won't go as high as the factory one. I think they go six, seven feet high. This only goes like four and a half feet high, but it's plenty high to pick up your load, take it where you want it, and dump it, and spread it, whatever you want. Nothing to it. And with the shorter arms, compared to the other aftermarket one with really long arms, I wouldn't trust that thing. This will pick up five to six hundred pounds. It's got big cylinders on it. These cylinders are three inch. They're three inch in diameter here. And this, the shaft itself is like one and a half inch. So it's very powerful. It'll, it'll pick, you know, six hundred pounds up pretty easy. There's videos out there on the Buford bucket showing a guy with a huge log in there. And it's just crazy what it'll do. I did six yards of dirt when I got it. Thought I had the video going in a tripod with the little button to start the camera. Well, I started it, but when I sat back on the tractor, the button shut it back off when, when I must have sat down in my pocket. So I don't have a video, but I'll get one in the spring. But I used, I moved that whole six yards of dirt in no time. It just was amazing. No more shoveling into a wheelbarrow. And this is fairly cheap. They're a little over two grand. And uh, that's not that's not bad at all for what you get out of it. And uh, my deck up here is a 54 inch 
And I added uh, this actuator on here, which was really nice too, so. Anyway, waiting for snow and all here in Minnesota. Can't wait to get a ton of snow because I want to try this beast out. And I added that beacon light up here also. I got a video on that also. And that was really simple. It, it just plugs into the uh, lighter down here. Well, I call it a cigarette lighter, but I guess it's an accessory outlet now they call them. And uh, that was real simple to put up too. But anyway, that's about all I got here. And uh, just wanted to share this. 758 with a windbreak. And I've got another one here I made for a 318. I had all out of conduit again also. And uh, this, this one I got a door. I made the whole side opens up. And uh, this worked really well on my 318. But and real simple to put on. This bracket I made here, you bolt this onto the back where it holds the back of the, oh, I guess the seat pan down. And you just leave this piece on. Then you walk this up on the back and put it through and put a bolt through here. And this is a conduit fitting. And then uh, up here are these two pieces. There's a solid rod here that goes through. The uh, underneath of the frame has little tabs that have holes in them. They were used for the deck. Well, this is also used to mount this. You just shut her up and lock it. It's a windbreak also, you know, it's not made to hold heat or anything, but it keeps the snow from blowing on, on you. And on a sunny day, I was out once when it was 20 below and sunny, I actually had to take my gloves off and my hat off because it was warm in there just from the, the clear poly on there, the clear vinyl, I guess, letting sun through. But anyway, so much for that. The Buford bucket, awesome. See you guys later.